What up? It's your boy, Mr. Rock7. And I watched the first episode of Dragon Ball Super at this very hour, 4 something p.m. I was going to watch it earlier, but it didn't drop immediately. I was waiting since 2 p.m. of yesterday. I'm not exactly expecting it then. Because I knew this stuff was going to be broadcasted 9 a.m. in Japan for the 15th, which would have meant 8 p.m. here. But it took a while for translation to drop. And when I got the chance, I watched it. Shit was popping. Shit was way more popping for translation, though. Like, if I would have tried to watch a couple of minutes of it through the raw version I would have I wouldn't have really gotten it or felt it but I really like this episode of Dragon Ball Super though cuz it kept a lot of the Dragon Ball vibe that I liked like there was some adventuring there was a lot of humor there was a story being told a lot of character interplay between What's his face? Goten, Trunks. You know, I really like those two characters together. But I haven't really watched the movies. And I've forgotten most of the filler episodes of the anime, but you know, that's a duo. It reminds me of like an earlier version of Gon and Gone and Killua. From Hunter X Hunter. Like I really like the interplay between those Goten's more of a sheltered, natural guy. Goten's, I mean, uh, Goten's more of that guy. And Trunks is, well, he's the son of Vegeta. Trunks is inherently a little badass. Kind of like Killua. In fact, the way they dress it, I really do get a Gon Killua vibe from them. So I like the little adventure they had for half of this where they were trying to get some magical water to apply cosmetically to Videl because of a conversation that Trunks heard from Bulma about her cosmetics. The action scene in this was them fighting a big ass snake. So I'm guessing. A lot of the animals in DBZ are really... There's a big inequality. Some of the animals, like the dinosaurs in Dragon Ball, an 11-year-old Goku could clap, but these, they were taking hits from trunks, and they ran away. They didn't get knocked out. They ran away out of fear. They didn't stand a chance. If they fought without concealing their power levels, but, you know, it was lit. Like, a snake tried to stop them from getting the water. But really, the main thing this episode is about, it's trying to showcase what happens since the end of Dragon Ball Z with all these characters. But Gohan is living with Videl, his soon-to-be wife. In a house built by Mr. Satan. Courtesy of Mr. Satan to them. And Gohan doesn't have a lot of money. Videl's really giving him a lot of his gifts. Goku, Gohan can't really give much in return. But you know, he's trying to start up. He's trying to be a scholar. Maybe a professor. I don't know. And that's really his main focus in life. He is out there trying to get his education, trying to become a professional and shit like that. He, he's not a neat like me, man. He's wavy. But, let's see. Mr. Satan himself is getting an award for world peace. He pretty much, effectively, to everyone else, he was the paper hero. The de jure hero. Since Goku wiped everyone's memories out with the Dragon Balls. So they didn't know who really saved the world from Majin Buu. 
So he got a World Peace Prize, and I guess it flex that he's the strongest guy in the universe. Not necessarily because he's an egomaniac anymore. Remember, Mr. Saiyan's character really developed. This is a dude who knows where he stands in the world, and he doesn't have to front except for PR purposes. And you get a little bit of a comic relief scene between him and Majin Buu. <laughs> Over here in the hood, we, we like to joke about how somewhat gay the relationship is. Out of context. I agree, they were, they were kind of playing house for most of the filler episodes in DBZ. I remember that shit. That was, that was the Bert and Ernie of my time. And motherfucking Ernie. Alright. So he gets a prize and he gets a cash reward of 100 billion zennies. I don't know if zennies is the same value of yen or the United States dollar or any of the European. any European currency. Maybe it could be pesos. Who knows? There's a lot of currency out there. But that's a lot of money. That ain't no joke. Anyway. We'll get back to that. No, let's get to that now. He really feels bad about having that money since he wasn't really the guy who saved the world. So a lot of the episode is him off screen trying to find someone from the Z Fighters who will accept that money. And I don't remember Vegeta ever pulling up here, but he was mentioned off screen, so they were interacting off screen. Mr. C and Vegeta. He tried to like pitch Vegeta accept the money. Vegeta didn't accept. So Vegeta's keep on Vegeta's been mature for a while. His character matured early on. You remember like when he had a wish that he could get? And he always wanted immortality. Instead, he asked for boots size 9. So, he's a little more down to earth. He cares more about his family now. And especially after his weird incident in where he became Majin Vegeta, he probably never wants to be selfish ever again. Okay. But that brings us to Goku. Which is the last important plot I can remember. Yeah, Goku is a vegetable farmer now. or I forgot what vegetable he was farming. I think it, it was something with a T. Um, oh, radish, maybe. So yeah, he's farming with that. And he was hearing about Goten's story, which I mentioned in the very beginning. But yeah, he's doing his thing right now. He wants to train with... King Kai, I think, because one of those Kais. Because he couldn't beat Boo on his own. Not only did he have to resort to using the fusion form with Vegeta Vegito to defeat Super Boo, but for Kid Boo, who's nerfed a little bit, he's more aggressive, but he's nonetheless nerfed. He had to pretty much let Vegeta be the tank, and the diversion while he used the power of everyone in the universe for a spirit bomb to to cheese that battle. So he's, he's feeling a little like, yo, I, I need to make some improvements right now. But he can't do that right now because Chi Chi told him, yo, you gotta you gotta grind right now. We need money. Keep in mind, every time Vegeta, I'm not Vegeta, Goku fucks off to train with King Kai, Chi Chi's gotta do all this shit on her own. And a lot of people are saying, oh, Chi Chi's a little bitchy and annoying because she pretty much always wants her kids to be scholars, she's always nagging and she's always flipping out. Well, yeah, you gotta save the world, and the world is of a little bit of a higher priority than your son's having their needs met, but she's kind of got to do all this shit on her own. 
whenever Piccolo isn't snatching Gohan away and taking care of his ass and making himself on his own. But that's just how it be. But eventually, Mr. Satan pulls up and he says, All right, this money that shouldn't really belong to me. You should take it. Goku is thinking, nah. I wasn't the... It wasn't just me who saved the world from Ajin Buu. It wasn't... Like, everyone did a little. Everyone pitched in and made the difference. So it, he would feel kind of bad for accepting it. But then Go-Chen tells him, Hey, but if you accept that money, then it's lit. You can get training and... He realizes this and he accepts it. He gives it to Chi Chi. She gets hype because that's that's good money right there. And yeah, he goes off to train since it's valid. She co signed, yeah, you can go and train with the Kais. That brings to one other thing Beerus and Wiz or Weiss. Yeah, the dude in. From the Battle of Gods and Fukatsu no F movie. Yeah, that dude is pretty much pulling up to planets saying, Alright, if you guys give me a good meal, good hospitality, and I like it, I'm going to spare this planet. If not, I'm going to blow this shit up. And you know what happens? They prefer a meal. He likes the way it tastes. But it was a little too greasy, so... He gave a little bit of a deduction. He only blew up half the planet, which I really like because he literally blew up half the planet. It was so clean and unrealistic looking. And from a series where Piccolo just blows up the moon like it's nothing and nothing happens to the climate, that's pretty unique. I mean, that's pretty, like, uh, fitting for Dragon Ball. A little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of mythology, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of slice-of-life reality, a little bit of everything I like. So the Kai's are concerned, because he's pretty much... Those Battle of God's views are going everywhere now, and... There may be a chance that they'll be going to Earth and doing the same exact thing. Which they will be doing. So that's the end of episode one. That's just my summary of it. Yeah, um, I really like the opening theme song. I was I'm a little mixed on the chorus. It's a little more guitar heavy. A little more slow. Mix of major chords, minor chords. It it's very sing songy. And believe me, I love guitar heavy songs. And I love songs that kinda of rock along, but my standards are the best Dragon Ball song was the Dragon Ball Z opening, the original Japanese one. Followed with the Dragon Ball opening. I really like that one, especially because of lower production standards at the time. It really sounds as if someone's just chilling in the studio singing this with raw instruments. It was really good. Uh, this one is, is very pretty. I'm going to like it. But I want to know what it sounds like in English. If you get like Broly or Goku to sing it, then it's going to be lit. Like one of those guys with some strong ass voices and shit. But yeah, it's a little more laid back, kind of like this episode. And I'm gonna accept it for that. The animation is really good. Like, everything has more life to it. Like, I, was, I saw like one scene where, to emphasize the cosmetic part, uh, some dude was poking at a girl's cheek. Not her butt cheek, but her face cheek. And it bounced back. It was like... The way skin does, he was talking about how soft it was. I've never, like, seen a dude in real life kind of do this. Maybe, like... 
facial cosmetics were kind of in at the time of that fictional world. And dudes were kind of interested, like, yo, how you'll fa face like, and shit like that. But, nah, it was, like, there's little details, uh, gelatinous drink that Beerus, or, yeah, Beerus was, uh, gulping down, he put it on him, like, in once. It was gelatinous, I don't know why it was served in a glass, so, is that normal? Put serving gelatinous like drinks in a glass, cause it wasn't liquid. Yeah, but every everything like looks textured right. There's a lot of detail. Animation wise, I enjoy the attention to detail. I like stuff like that. That's why I like this next generation of consoles. Seventh generation was disappointing in terms of what they added, until HD came in. But who cares? It's all about that attention to detail. That stuff that I paid attention to even when I was four. In terms of things taking me out of realism. Okay, what else is there to talk about? Well, I like how it's starting off a little more slow paced, a little more relaxed. But I know a lot of people aren't going to like that because. They like five minutes of fuckery and then going straight into the action. But because I read, I used to read the manga of Dragon Ball, and they kind of take it all in at once, all aspects of it. I was really feeling this. I know just from seeing articles of what the next few episodes will look like. Yeah, it's going to continue to move in a relaxed pace. Until, until they gotta reenact the movies, I guess. Who knows how they'll go about it? I'm not gonna say who knows, cause the information is probably out there and readily available. But I haven't really done my homework that much. All I gotta say is I really like this episode. I hope they can continue moving in this pace and kind of gradually getting into the action because I want to see Goku at least strong enough to clap boob single-handedly. We're not going to be seeing any Super Saiyan 4 stuff quite yet. Anyway, it's been your boy Mr. Monk 7 back again with another vlog style rant and respect King, man. That's all I gotta say.